much, everybody. This is a, a case where if they can do this to me, they can do this to anyone. And these are bad people. These are, in many cases, I believe, sick people. When you look at our country, what's happening where millions and millions of people are flowing in from all parts of the world, not just South America, from Africa, from Asia, from the Middle East. And they're coming in from jails and prisons. And they're coming in from mental institutions and insane asylums. They're coming in from all over the world into our country. And we have a president and a group of fascists that don't want to do anything about it. Because they could right now, today, he could stop it. But he's not. They're destroying our country. Our country is in very bad shape. And they're very much against me saying these things. Uh, they want to raise your taxes by four times. They want to stop you from having cars with their ridiculous mandates that make it impossible for you to get a car or afford a car. But make it very possible for China to build all of our cars. It's a very serious problem that we have. We just uh, went through one of many experiences where we had a conflicted judge, highly conflicted. There's never been a more conflicted judge. Now, I'm under a gag order, which nobody's ever been under. No presidential candidate's ever been under a gag order before. I'm under a gag order, nasty gag order, where I've had to pay thousands of dollars in penalties and fines and was threatened with jail. Think of it, I'm the leading candidate. I'm leading Biden by a lot, and I'm leading the Republicans to the point where that's over. So I'm the leading person for president, and I'm under a gag order by a man that can't put two sentences together, given by a court. And they are in total conjunction with the White House and the DOJ, just so you understand. This is all done by Biden and his people. Maybe his people, more importantly. I don't know if Biden knows too much about it, because I don't know if he knows about anything. But he's nevertheless the president, so we have to use his name. And this is done by Washington, and nobody's ever seen anything like it. So we have a judge who's highly conflicted. You know what the confliction is. Nobody, nobody wants to write about it, and I'm not allowed to talk about it. If I do, he said, I get put in jail. So we'll play that game a little bit longer. We won't talk about it, but you're allowed to talk about it. I hope you do, because there's never been anybody so conflicted as this. As far as the trial itself, it was very unfair. We weren't allowed to, allowed to use our election expert under any circumstances. Uh, you saw what happened to some of the witnesses that were on our side. They were literally crucified by this man who looks like an angel, but he's really a devil. He looks so nice and soft. People say, oh, he seems like such a nice man. No, unless you saw him in action. And you saw that with a certain witness that went through hell. And when we wanted to do things, he wouldn't let him. It's a rigged, it was a rigged trial. We wanted a venue change where we could have a fair trial. We didn't get it. We wanted a judge change. We wanted a judge that wasn't conflicted. And obviously he didn't do that. Uh, there's nobody's ever seen anything like it. We had a DA who is a failed DA. Crime is rampant in New York, violent crime. That's what he's really supposed to be looking at. Crime is rampant in New York. Yesterday in McDonald's, you had a man hitting him up with, with uh, machetes, a machete. Whoever can imagine even a machete being wielded in a store, in a place where they're eating, and he's going rampant, and Bragg is down watching a trial on what they call uh, crimes, crimes. They're falsifying business records. That sounds so bad. To me, it sounds very bad. You know, it's only a misdemeanor, but to me, it sounds so bad. When they say falsifying business, that's a bad thing for me. I've never had that before. I'm falsifying. You know what falsifying business records is? In the first degree, they say falsifying business records sounds so good, right? It means that legal expense 
I paid a lawyer, totally legal. I paid a lawyer, a legal expense. And a bookkeeper, without any knowledge from me, correctly marked it down in the books. A very professional woman, highly respected, she testified. Marked it down in the books, a legal expense. So a legal expense, I paid a lawyer, is a legal expense in the books. It's not uh, sheetrock, construction, or any other thing. It's a legal expense. Think of that. This is what the falsification of business records were. And I said, what else are you going to call it? What else are you going to call it? Now, I would have testified. I wanted to testify. The theory is you never testify, because as soon as you testify, anybody, if it were George Washington, don't testify, because they'll get you on something that you said slightly wrong, and then they sue you for perjury. But I didn't care about that. I wanted to. But the judge allowed them to go into everything that I was ever involved in, not this case, everything that I was ever involved in, which is a first. In other words, you could go into every single thing that I ever did. Was he a bad boy here? Was he a bad boy there? And my lawyer said, what do you need to go through? And all you wanted to do is testify simply on this case, because I would have loved to have testified. To this day, I would have liked to have testified. But you would have been you would have said something out of whack, like it was a beautiful sunny day and it was actually raining out. And I very much appreciate the big crowd of people outside. That's incredible what's happening. The level of support has been incredible. So the whole thing is legal expense was marked down as legal expense. Think of it. This is, my, this is the crime that I committed that I'm supposed to go to jail for 187 years for when you have violent crime all over this city at levels that nobody's ever seen before, where you have businesses leaving, and businesses are leaving because of this, because heads of businesses say, man, we don't want to get involved with that. I could go through the books of any business person in this city, and I could find things that, in theory, I guess, let's indict him, let's destroy his life. But I'm out there, and I don't mind being out there, because I'm doing something for this country, and I'm doing something for our Constitution. It's very important, far beyond me. And this can't be allowed to happen to other presidents. It should never be allowed to happen in the future. But this is far beyond me. This is bigger than Trump. This is bigger than me. This is bigger than my presidency. And the people understand it, because I just see a poll just came out, the Daily Mail. That was the first one, came out, it was done last night right after the verdict, where I'm up six points. Six points from what we already were. We were leading fairly substantially. We're up six points in the Daily Mail poll. Now, maybe other polls come out, it says something differently. But a lot of people have predicted it because the public understands and they understand what's, what's going on. This is a scam, there's a rigged trial, it shouldn't have been in that venue. We shouldn't have had that judge. He should have allowed, allowed us to have an election expert. We had the best expert, most respected expert, head of the Federal Elections Commission. He was all set to testify. He was waiting for two days. And when it was his turn, Bragg's people protested. And the judge knocked him out, said, you can't testify. He actually said, you can't testify for anything having to do with the trial. You can say what the federal elections is. Well, that doesn't help. Everybody knows that. But you can't testify. So essentially, he wasn't able to testify. Other people weren't able to testify. But with these people, they were able to use people salacious. By the way, and nothing ever happened. There was no anything. Nothing ever happened, and they know it. But they were as salacious as they could be, and it had nothing to do with the case but it had to do with politics. And do you notice the timing? The timing was perfect. This case was dead. It was dropped by every agency, every governmental board. It was dropped by the highly respected Southern District. They said, no, there's no case here. It was dropped by federal election. And that's what it's about. This is about a federal election, not a state election. You're not even allowed to look at it. They took the state and the city, and they went into a federal election. They're not allowed. The people from federal elections, Southern District, and Washington dropped the case. Everybody dropped the case. There was no case. Cy Vance dropped the case. 
And when Bragg came in, he said, this is the most ridiculous case I've ever seen. And who would have a certain person, again, gag order, who would have a certain person like this ever testify? He said, this is essentially one of the worst people I've ever seen ever to testify. He said, the craziest case I've ever seen, this is Bragg. Then when I announced I was running for president, long time later, they decided to revive this case. And they got a judge, Judge Marshan, who was responsible for another case that was also it destroyed the life of a very good man, by the way. Destroyed the life of a very good man who went to prison once, and then they just put him in prison again because they said he he lied. He didn't lie. I looked at the statements he made. In fact, he didn't remember something, and they put him in jail again. They've destroyed him with me for many years. He was an honorable person. He was an honest man. And if you look at what he did, supposedly, it never happened. There's never been anything like this over the education of his grandchildren. Over, he didn't report that he had a car or two cars on his income. I don't know. I wonder how many people here have cars. I wonder how many people said, oh, gee, I have a car that's worth X dollars. How do you even figure? And I guess you do have to report it, but I would say probably almost nobody does. Nobody even thinks about it. They put this man, they destroyed this man, but they put him in jail again because they didn't want him to testify. They didn't want him to testify. That's why he went to jail. They put him in jail twice. He's 77 years old. Now, normally I'd say that's an old guy, but I don't feel 77. Nobody ever says that about me. I'd like them to say, gee, we have to have a little sorrow for this man because they, don't, they just don't say that about me. But maybe I'm better off that way. I think I'm probably better off that way. But they put him in jail twice. And you have to see what they put him in jail. And he was threatened by the judge. This man was told you're going to get 15 years in jail if you don't give up Trump. And he was told that. You're going to get 15 years in jail. And he made a plea deal because he didn't want to spend the rest of his life. And he was told that viciously. We're living in a, in a fascist state. He was told that viciously. So you can go to jail for four months, five months, or you can get 15 years in jail. So do a plea. Almost who wouldn't do that plea? Everyone does those pleas. It's a horrible thing. There's a whole group of lawyers that fight that. It's so unfair. It's so unfair. But they destroyed his life. So many other things. Uh, you look at Southern District didn't want to bring the case. Nobody wanted to bring the case. And then you know who didn't want to bring the case? Most of all is Bragg. Bragg didn't want to bring it. But then he brought it. And they tried to make it a different case. They didn't say legal expense equal legal expense. Again, if I wrote down and paid a lawyer, and by the way, this was a highly qualified lawyer. Now, I'm not allowed to use his name because of the gag order. But you know, he's a sleazebag. Everybody knows that. Took me a while to find out. But he was effective. He did work. But he wasn't a fixer. He was a lawyer. You know, they like to use the word fixer. He wasn't a fixer. He was a lawyer. At the time, he was a a fully accredited lawyer. Now, he got into trouble not because of me. He got into trouble because he made outside deals, and he had something to do with taxi cabs and medallions, and he borrowed money. And that's why he went. And then he pled to, to three, uh, three election violations. And as soon as I saw that, I said, I wonder why he did that. He pled. He took a deal. Now, he took a deal because he wanted to get off. In other words, I'll take a plea deal, and I want to get off. And he wanted to make a deal with the Southern District. And they wrote the worst report I think I've ever seen on any human being, other than the report that was written on James Comey by the Inspector General, a very great Inspector General, actually, wrote a report that was so bad. This one was possibly worse. The Southern District, the judge didn't let us use it. He said, it's hearsay. I said, it's not hearsay. Wouldn't let us use it. This is about the man. But he got in trouble 
for a very simple reason, because he was involved with borrowing a lot of money and he did something with the banks. I don't know if it's defrauded the banks, but something happened. You guys know what it is. And then in addition to that, he gave up on three things where he wasn't guilty. In fact, they were going to testify in that. The uh, head of the FEC, the Brad Smith, the uh, an expert, number one rated in the country, was going to testify. He took a plea on three things. He just added them in because that gave him more bargaining power with respect to me. But the three things that he pled on having to do with the election and having to do essentially a little bit with me, uh, they weren't crimes. They weren't crimes. Nor is paying money under an NDA. So we have an NDA, non-disclosure agreement. It's a big deal, a non-disclosure agreement. Totally honorable, totally good, totally accepted. Everybody has them. Every company has non-disclosure agreements. But the press called it slush fund and all sorts of other things. Hush money, hush money. It's not hush money. It's called the non-disclosure agreement. And most of the people in this room have a non-disclosure agreement with their company. It's a disgrace. So it's not hush money. It's a non-disclosure agreement, totally legal, totally common. Everyone has it. And what happened is he signed a non-disclosure agreement with this person, I guess other people, but it's totally honest. You're allowed to make the payment. Could You don't have to make it. You can make it any way you want. It's a non-disclosure agreement. And he signed that. And there was nothing wrong with signing it. And this should have been a non-case. And everybody said it was a non-case, including Bragg. Bragg said, until I ran for office. And then they saw the polls. I was leading the Republicans. I was leading the Democrats. I was leading everybody. And all of a sudden, they brought it back. It's a very sad thing that's happening in our country. And it's a, uh, it's a thing that I'm honored in a way. I'm honored. It's not that it's pleasant. It's very bad for family. It's very bad for friends and businesses. But I'm honored to be involved in it because somebody has to do it. And I might as well keep going and be the one. But I'm very honored to be involved because we're fighting for our Constitution. The money that was paid was paid legally. There was nothing illegal. In fact, the lawyer in creating the NDA, because at that time he was a fully accredited lawyer. He wasn't a fixer. I never thought of him as a fixer. The media called him a fixer or the prosecutors called him a fixer. He was a, he was a lawyer. And he was fairly good. Later on, I didn't like what he did. I didn't like, for instance, I didn't like that when I became president, he went around and made deals with companies. When I heard that, he was gone. He was gone. And he had payments coming to him. And a lot of this involved things that are very simple. There was nothing wrong. These were standard, this was standard stuff. All standard stuff. Everything involved was standard. There was no crime here. In fact, I just watched a couple of the reports. You watched Jonathan Turley, Andy McCarthy, Greg Jarrett. You look at all of these people. Uh, Mark Levin, all very talented people, great people. Many more, many more. And they don't know me, essentially. They don't know me. They're legal scholars and experts. But I look at them. I watched uh, Turley this morning saying, there's no crime here. Everybody says there's no crime here, except for this DA that's got the, the city out of control with crime. It's, out of, it's absolutely out of control. So we have an NDA that was signed. We have legal expenses. And here's the thing on legal expenses. Uh, you have 100 where they say if they do a charge. I just recorded this out. Falsification of business records in the first degree. It sounds so bad. Wow. And even my own lawyers, I get very upset with them because they don't say what it is. They say, uh, well, falsification of legal uh, records is only a felony. Well, that's a lot. It's only a, they say, a misdemeanor. But they try and bring it up to a felony if there's two crimes. They have all these different things. The other thing is they miss the statute of limitations by a lot. 
because this was very old. They could have brought this seven years ago instead of bringing it right in the middle of the election. So they missed the statute of limitations. They did everything. Now, let me give you the good news. The good news is, last night, we just got a report this morning, in the history of politics, I believe, maybe I'm wrong, that somebody will find that I'm wrong, maybe, but I don't think so. They raised with small money donors, meaning like $21, $42, $53, $38, a record $39 million in a, about a 10-hour period. No, think of that. I like those people. Because so far, I guess it's backfired. Now, I don't know. I'd rather not have it happen. I don't want to have it backfire. I don't want to win this thing legitimately, not because they were stupid and did things that they shouldn't be doing. They shouldn't have brought this case. They were saying it this morning. This is a case that should not have been brought. I watched Andy McCarthy say this is a case that should not have been brought. And that was this morning. But they all say that. Every legal scholar has said it. Every legal, and these are great people. They really understand the law. The other thing, a poll just came out. The first poll, I don't know, maybe others will be bad. But a poll just came out a little while ago. The Daily Mail. Does anybody read the Daily Mail? It's very good. They have a good poll. At least I like it today. And the Daily Mail just came out with a poll. And it has Trump up six points in the last 12 hours. Six points. Six points since this happened. Who thought this could happen? Because the people of our country know it's a hoax. They know it's a hoax. They get it. You know, they're really smart. And uh, it's really something. So we're going to be appealing this scam. We're going to be appealing it on many different things. He wouldn't allow us to have witnesses. He wouldn't allow us to talk. He wouldn't allow us to do anything. The judge was a tyrant. And you got to see that with Bob Costello, a fine man. I've never seen anything like it. And neither has anybody that was in that courthouse where he demanded that the courthouse be cleared. Now, the good news is most of the people in the courthouse were the media. And anybody that was in the media, if you're fair, you'll say, wow, that was anger. That was crazed. He was crazed. And the reason that Bob Costello acted a little bit upset, which I think he has a right to, was that every question he was being asked, was being objected to by the other side and sustained by the judge. Sustained, sustained, sustained. I think he did it many times. I don't know what the number, many times. Even I was sitting there saying, and these were basic questions. And he, I never saw anybody treated that way by a judge. And I've been treated very badly by two other judges also, because it's all the same thing. And it all comes out of the White House. Crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country. He's the worst president in the history of our country. The most incompetent, the dumbest president we've ever had. He's the dumbest president, most incompetent president, and he's the most dishonest president we've ever had. And so many of the, he's a Manchurian candidate. You take a look at the way he treats China, Russia, so many others. You know, I ended the Russian pipeline, it was dead. He comes in and he approves it. And he gets three and a half million, meaning three and a half million is paid to the family, his family, from the mayor of Moscow's wife. And I said, where did that come from? Nobody wants to talk about it. But he's a very big danger to our country. And the only way they think they can win this election is by doing exactly what they're doing right now, win it in the courts because they can't win it at the ballot box. So we're going to show them that, oh, we're going to fight. It's, it's actually, I don't know, it's something where I'm wired in such a way that a lot of people would have gone away a long time ago. They would have gone away after impeachment hoax number one. That was a total hoax. I had great support from the Republican Party, though. Then you had impeachment hoax number two. And then they formed the committee. How about they formed the committee of thugs, the J6, Committee of Thugs. And they took their records 
and they destroyed all of the records after the committee was abandoned because those records were great for us. Now, can you imagine if Republicans did that? Everybody would have been in jail by now. You think of that. The unselect, I call it the unselect. They call it select committee. I call it the unselect committee of thugs. They meet. It's 100 percent Democrat and two past Republicans that are no longer Republicans that are no longer in business anymore. Thank you. But it was all Democrats and two wayward Republicans. Liz Cheney and crying Adam Kinzinger. He cries every time he goes on television. He's the most emotional human being I think I've ever seen. And that was our representatives. These two people were our rep. So they had all this stuff that they're leaking. And then when it came time to look at the records, like where the police said and the uh, Capitol Guard said that I supplied, think of it, that I recommended as many soldiers or National Guard as you want, 10,000. If you had 500, you wouldn't have had a problem. There wouldn't have been a J6. But Nancy Pelosi and the group didn't want it anyway. So they have testimony to all of that that I did not attack the Secret Service agent in the front of a car. You know, these are strong people. And I supposedly went to the driver, and I grabbed him around the neck. And he rebuffed me, and then I went to the other guy, who I think is a black belt in karate, and he's slightly younger than me, maybe 35 years, 40 years, 50 years. And I grabbed him around the neck and said, he's a black belt in karate. They know how to get somebody from around their neck. They would have gone like this, and that would be the end of that. <laughs> Actually, I had a friend that said, you shouldn't dispute that. That makes you look like the toughest cookie we've ever seen. You should have let that go on. But the fact is, it never happened. It was all made up. And that was proven to be made up. It proved to be a false story. And the, they deleted and destroyed all of that information, every ounce of it. We're dealing with a corrupt government. We have a corrupt country. Our elections are corrupt. Our borders are open. Our borders are going to be closed very soon. November 5th is going to be the most important day in the history of our country. Now, when I say that, because my people are always saying, do this, do this, because we're fighting for America, DonaldJTrump.com. I hope everybody watching right now, DonaldJTrump.com, because it really makes a difference. Uh, they have a lot of money on the other side. I don't know where they get it. Nobody knows where they get it. But for some reason, they get money. But they're not on the side of our country. In many ways, I think they hate our country. Who on earth can want open borders where people are allowed to pour in from countries unknown, from places unknown, from languages that we don't even, that we haven't even heard of. We have people sitting in school with languages where very few people have ever even heard of these languages. It's not like Spanish or French or Russian. Languages unknown. We have people coming from corners of the globe, and many of them are not good people. Many terrorists, record levels of terrorism Record levels of terrorists have come into our country. Record. They've never seen anything like it. You know, there was a report that in 2019, I don't believe this, by the way, the media gave it, and it was good for me, believe it or not. They said in 2019, there were no terrorists recorded that came into our country. I don't believe that. I don't think that's possible. But they actually, 2019 was a Trump year. I don't believe that that could be possible. But they said no terrorists came into our country. So let's say it was close. Let's say it was close. But now record levels of terrorists, record levels, the highest level we've ever seen of terrorists are pouring into our country. You have China with just in the last few months, 29,000 people came in and I looked at them on a line and they look like perfect soldiers. They're almost all male from 19 to 25. It looks like a recruiting exercise. They have beautiful tents. They have propane stoves. They have cell phones, the best you can buy. I said, what's going on? It looks like they're building an army right in our country. Now, I don't think that would happen, right? We're losing our country. 
And I really think that this is an event, what took place yesterday with this judge. Look, we have conflicted, but he's a crooked judge. And you'll understand that. And I say that knowing that it's very dangerous for me to say that. And I don't mind because I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to save our country and to save our Constitution. I don't mind. So, so, thank you. So we will continue the fight. Uh, we're going to make America great again. Very simple. When people fight MAGA, they say, we're going to fight. I watch Biden. We're going to fight MAGA. We're going to stop MAGA. It's make America great again. That's all it is. MAGA. Make America great again. Our country's in serious trouble. We owe $36 trillion. We were going to be, we were energy independent for the first time ever. And now we're begging Venezuela for oil. One statistic you have to hear. Venezuela was crime-ridden. Caracas, the cities, crime-ridden. Two years ago, three years ago, they just reported a 72% drop in crime in the last year because all of their criminals, most of them, and the rest are coming in now, the ones that didn't come in. In Venezuela, their prisons have been emptied into the United States. Their criminals and drug dealers have been taken out of the cities and brought into the United States. And that's true with many other countries. The Congo has just released a lot of people from jail. Congo, Africa, just released a lot of people, a lot of people from their prisons and jails and brought them into the United States of America. This is what's happening to our country. And it's not sustainable by anyone. Little things like our kids can't have a Little League game anymore because you have tents and you have migrants living on the fields. That's the least of it. Uh, people are taking over our luxury hotels, migrants, and yet our veterans, our great veterans, are living on the streets like dogs. They're living on the streets. But migrants are living in luxury hotels and cities all over our country run by Democrats. So it's my honor to be doing this. It really is. It's a very uh, unpleasant thing, to be honest. But it's a great, great honor. We're going we're gonna to do what I have to do. I'm going to do it. And, and the support has been. That's why I mentioned the number of $39 million. That's why I mentioned we're up six points. And we went up a lot over the last month because everybody saw it was a rigged deal. It was a rigged trial. But we're going to make America great again. We're going to make it better than ever before. November 5th, remember, November 5th is the most important day in the history of our country. Thank you very much, everybody.